Hello, I'm Dr. Smita Devani. I'm a gastroenterologist. Now, most people ask me, hey, gastroenterologist, what does that mean? Basically, gastroenterology is a doctor who specializes in the gut. Now, what do I mean by the gut? It starts from the mouth, goes to the foot pipe, onto the stomach. There's a whole lots of feet of small intestine, large intestine. But we also deal with the liver, the gallbladder, pancreas. So it's a fair amount of system. Now, the problem with the gut is that it, a lot of it is hidden. We can't see it. The only thing a lot of patients will complain about is the problems. So we have to decide as to when this is important and when this is not. Now, starting from the mouth, you can have mouth ulcers, and this is very important because if you have mouth ulcers that are not healing within four or five days, because a lot of people get mouth ulcers when you're sick, but if you're getting mouth ulcers that are not healing within a couple of weeks, please go and see a dentist or you can go and see a maxillofacial surgeon or you can see a gastroenterologist because this sometimes can be treatable. Sometimes they can be due to illnesses, so you get a mouth sore. Or, but if you've been smoking, drinking, and taking a lot of alcohol, uh, tobacco, then this is likely that this is early forms of mouth cancer. So the idea is to get this as early as possible. Now, what are the other problems? If you get pain in the stomach, pain in the stomach can mean something very benign like what's called irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome is when you just get pain, what's called bloating. You're not losing weight, but you know it's coming on intermittently. It can be related to some foods, um, common foods like sukuma wiki, beans, uh, sometimes ugali, sometimes red meat, and this goes off. You're not losing weight, in which case there may not be anything. However, if it continues and the pain is getting more, or you're vomiting, then you really need to see, start seeing a doctor. Because, and ideally a specialist, because they're the ones who are gonna detect these things early. Now, the stomach can have ulcers. Now, ulcers are mostly caused by a bacteria, which is very common. It's called Helicobacter pylori. We are looking at 50 to 80% prevalence rates. In other words, if you take a population, you're looking at 50% of the patients or 80% would have H. pylori. And not H. Pyl all H. pylori is bad. Some is good, some is sitting around doing nothing. But others can cause ulcers, others can cause inflammation, and others can cause uh, very rarely cancers. So you need to be cautious about this bacteria. So what we do, often we do a test in blood or stool, and very often the treatment is simple in that we give uh, two antibiotics, one acid medication, and it will eradicate the bacteria in about 85% of the patients. Do not ever take the same medication again. If you're prescribed again, say no, that you need a second line. Obviously, your bacteria is resistance. If you've taken one dose, do not go for a second same dose. You have to different, need different antibiotics. We can get rid of it. Uh, sometimes you need third line and fourth line. Those are rare. The other thing is that if you're vomiting blood or passing blood, now, passing blood could mean that you are passing either fresh blood, like bright red, or it can be dark red, or it can be purple or black. Now, when it's dark red, black, very often it means that you are bleeding from the lower end of the gut. However, if you do get blood, that's quite a bit. You're feeling dizzy. You're not feeling comfortable in the stomach. Please see a doctor immediately. That means you are bleeding from your gut. This is important, that you need, probably will need to be admitted. We need to transfuse blood and stop the bleeding from wherever this is coming from. Now, the other important uh, organ is the colon. Increasingly, we are seeing more and more colon cancer. And in our, our Kenyan population, we are probably seeing it in a, at a younger age than even the Western population. Now, we don't have, unfo unfortunately, we don't have very good studies in Kenya to say you know, what are the prevalence, but definitely we are seeing more cancers at our tertiary center. And the thing is that very often they're coming late. So idea is that we need to pick this up early. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of colon cancer? Number one, 
you'll get what's called change in bowel habit. Now, what is change in bowel habit? Suppose your bowel habit was that you go every day. Now you are going three to four times a day, or you are going once every two, three days. Or the character changes from a normal stool, now it's very thin stool. Please look at the toilet bowl after you're done. It may save your life, because if you see bleeding, you see something is not right, and that doesn't resolve very quickly, I'm talking about a few days, then please you need to see a doctor. Now very often when you get rectal bleeding, that means rectal bleeding through the anal area, a doctor will say, oh, don't worry about it, it's hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids bleeding can be prolonged, but you always need to make sure that it's just not a hemorrhoid or pile bleeding. And for this, you have to have further tests. We can do a very simple test in the office, but ideally we should then go on to do what's called flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is having a look at the colon. Basically, this is the colon. It goes all the way, where this, it meets the small intestine and goes all the way. Now, you can bleed from the lower end, what are called piles, or you can bleed from some growths in your colon called polyps, and sometimes you can have cancers which are also bleeding. Very rarely you can have what's called diverticuli. Diverticuli are small pouches in your colon that form with age, and this can bleed as well. But we need to make sure that the bleeding is only coming and which is something which is imminently treatable. Because the idea is that if you have a problem, please seek a doctor's attention fairly quickly so we can actually get to the problem faster. If it's cancer, we can treat. Now, don't forget, colon cancer does not meet, meet, mean that it's a death sentence anymore. We are pretty aggressive in what we are doing now. We can remove cancers, we can remove parts of the liver if necessary, we even remove part of the lungs if it has spread. Chemotherapy and sometimes radiotherapy works very well for some of these cancers. And I have patients now who are coming even after 7, 10, 20 years and saying, I'm good. You know, so we've cured them. After 5 years, generally we consider it a cure. So we are getting patients who are doing very, very well. So it does not mean a death sentence. And our understanding of colon cancers is increasing. Now, what do we do in these instances? We do very often what are called endoscopies for the, what's called the hollow gut. Now, what is an endoscopy? Endoscopy is when you put a thin tube down any, any orifice, in other words, any hole that we can go through. Now, what does a, an upper endoscopy or gastro, gastroscopy mean? Gastroscopy means that you come in, Sometimes we give you some medications to make you slightly sleepy, and then we put in a thin tube down the foot pipe and have a look. We are actually seeing what's happening. So you can see what's happening. We can take biopsies of whatever's happening, or if you are bleeding, we can actually uh, stop the bleeding at the same time. And we can actually know what's happening. There are some patients who do have colon problems, in which case, we have to give you something to clear you out, in other words, uh, quite a powerful laxative, and then we introduce a scope all the way around and do what's called a colonoscopy. Now, increasingly people are getting more aware of these procedures and they do come and see us fairly frequently and earlier on. Now, when should you have a colonoscopy? One important indicator is if you're having rectal bleeding. If you're having rectal bleeding, which is not explainable and something that you can't see, even if it's a hemorrhoid, you still need a partial colonoscopy. That means just looking up till here if you're young, but a full colonoscopy if you're slightly older, just to make sure that there's no other cause of your rectal bleeding. These are the procedures that we do now. Now, colonoscopies are done fairly regularly in all the major hospitals in uh, Nairobi, as well as in some parts of Kenya. And uh, it's a fairly simple procedure whereby um, if it's done very well, in other words, you cleared the bowel out and we can have a good look, there's a almost 70% uh, chance that you may not get a colon cancer after the first colonoscopy. But it's recommended at the present moment that you should have a colonoscopy every 10 years. Now, these are people for what's called screening. However, if you have a family history of colon cancer, in other words, your sibling or your parent has a colon cancer, you're, you're advised to have a colonoscopy early on. If you have a change in bowel habit, 
if you're bleeding, if you're anemic, especially what's called iron deficiency, in other words, you're lacking in iron. Now, although in women, iron deficiency is common in women who are menstruating because they can lose a lot of blood through there, the other reasons is the gut, the upper gut or the lower gut, the upper, the stomach or the colon. And it's good to have a colonoscopy done just to make sure there's no other cause for bleeding or becoming anemic. The other condition that's, that we do see is, is a gallbladder disease. Now, gallbladder is a small organ. Basically, the liver produces the bile, which goes down into the pipe and goes into the storage tank called the gallbladder. And then when you eat, the bile flows down to the intestines to digest your fatty foods. So we can get stones formed in the gallbladder. And these stones sometimes can also travel down into the bile duct, this pipe that, and in which case you can get jaundice, you can get vomiting, fevers. Just you, you can get gallbladder infections as well. And this is called cholecystitis, in which case now a very good surgeon can actually remove with keyhole surgery. They just make four small holes in your stomach and remove it at the same time. Uh, it's, you can live well your gallbladder because it's like a storage tank. So it's like, as I always explain to my patients, it's like having a direct tap as opposed to having a tank on your house. So you don't have a tank. So you get direct flow of bile. If you have stones within the bile duct, you may need a procedure called ERCP, which is basically an endoscopic procedure where we put a thin tube down here, make a small hole here, and remove the gold stones all through the pipe. So you don't need an external surgery, except that you may need to remove your gallbladder subsequently. If you're anemic, and especially iron deficiency anemia, if you're jaundiced, which is not clearing up very quickly, if you have itching of the skin, and that's because of the liver jaundice, these are the things you really need to seek a specialist attention so we can get to the problem earlier and deal with this in the early stages rather than late stages.